The Magic School Bus in the Time of the Dinosaurs by Joanna Cole, illustrated by Bruce Dagan. Because of the amount of information in this book, I'll just be reading the main narrative text. You can pause on any page or buy the book to see the details. To Armand Morgan, our personal guide to the time of the dinosaurs. It was visitor's day at our school. Parents, relatives, and friends were coming that afternoon to see our work. In Miss Frizzle's class, we were making the whole room into dinosaur land. Suddenly, Miss Frizzle said, Please pay attention, children. I have wonderful news. Our class has been invited to a dinosaur dig, explained the Frizz. We'll be leaving right away. As we went out, one kid grabbed the video camera. Others took along model dinosaurs for good luck. When you have the wackiest teacher in school, you need all the luck you can get. We couldn't believe we had to get on that rickety old school bus again. Kids held their lucky dinosaurs tight and hoped for the best. As we rolled onto the highway, Miss Frizzle shouted from the driver's seat, We're on our way to fossil country, kids. Who knows what a fossil is? Luckily, we had done our homework. We knew a fossil is anything left from a prehistoric animal or plant. After we had been driving for a long time, we came to a desert where people were working. Miss Frizzle said this was the dinosaur dig. The people were paleontologists, scientists who study prehistoric life. Everyone at the dig was working hard, using all kinds of tools to separate the fossils from the rocks around them. The paleontologists told us they had found the fossil bones of a duck-billed dinosaur called Myasaura. The paleontologists seemed sad. We were looking for fossil eggs, they said, but we haven't found any yet. We saw a gleam in Miss Frizzle's eye. Want to look for some Myasaura nests, kids? She shouted. She rushed us onto the bus and drove off. We hadn't gone far when Miss Frizzle stopped the bus. She turned the dial on the dashboard and the bus began to change. It looked like a giant alarm clock. Miss Frizzle said it was a time machine. The hand on the clock started moving backward. One hour back, one day back, one year back. Outside the windows, the desert was whizzing by. One thousand years, one million years. We're on our way to the time of the Mayasaura. Hang on, class, yelled the Frizz. Ring, ring, the alarm went off. We heard Miss Frizzle say, oops, we had a little machine trouble. We went back too far in time, but it's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. We missed the time of the Myasaura by millions of years. The Frizz pointed to some dinosaurs that were hunting on the banks of a river. Their name is Coelophysis, she said. Those early dinosaurs were small and light. The giant dinosaurs did not develop until later. Suddenly, a large reptile rose out of the water and opened its huge mouth. That is not a dinosaur, Miss Frizzle said. It's a phytosaur, a crocodile-like dinosaur. The phytosaur caught a little dinosaur and pulled it underwater. We wanted to get back on the bus pronto, but Miss Frizzle said we had to learn about Triassic plant life. We were examining some ferns when Miss Frizzle shouted, Look at those terrific sauropods! They were the first dinosaurs to eat plants! A sudden downpour caught us by surprise, but the dinosaurs went right on eating. We ran for the bus, and Frizzle called, Get ready to go forward in time, kids! The last things we saw before we took off were some small, furry animals. Miss Frizzle said they were the first mammals. The hand on the clock moved, for moved ahead, and the Triassic rainforest whizzed out of sight. Ring, ring! The alarm went off, and we heard Miss Frizzle say, Oh no, we stopped too soon. It was the late Jurassic period, the age of giants. Notice these sauropod dinosaurs, children, said Miss Frizzle. They were kind of impossible to miss. They were the largest land animals that ever lived. Under a pile of leaves, we found some dinosaur eggs about to hatch. Nearby, some stegosaurs, plated dinosaurs, were eating plants. One of the stegosaurs had a hurt leg. Suddenly, an allosaurus approached the wounded stegosaurus. Stegosaurus's spiked tail lashed out. It missed allosaurus by an inch. What would happen next? We held our breath. Allosaurus darted close and took a big bite. Then it moved back and waited. Stegosaurus got weaker and weaker. 
It had become food for Allosaurus. As we ran for the time machine, Miss Frizzle pointed out some strange birds. The first appeared in the bir- the first birds appeared in the late Jurassic, she said. Then she pushed the fast forward button and shouted, Myasora, here we come. Ring, ring, the alarm went off again. We looked out, and then we freaked out. Once again, we had stopped too soon. Here we are in the late Cretaceous period, announced Miss Frizzle. At this time, there was a sea right in the middle of our continent. Out the windows, enormous sea reptiles swam by. Overhead, flying reptiles glided past, dipping their beaks in the water to catch fish. We were getting a little wet, so the frizz set the clock ahead again. The next thing we knew, we had traveled forward two million years. Now, we were at the very end of the Cretaceous period. This was the time of the last dinosaurs. This was the time we had been looking for. As soon as we got off the bus, we saw that the Cretaceous world was different. The weather was cooler. There were colorful flowers and fruits everywhere. And there were lots of new plant-eating dinosaurs. These plant-eaters could chew better than any other dinosaurs, said Miss Frizzle. They had terrific teeth for grinding, and they had cheeks. We were watching the plant eaters chew when some Tyrannosaurs approached. Tyrannosaurs were the largest meat eaters ever. Their mouths were giant biting machines with 60 sharp, stabbing teeth. The Tyrannosaurs were scary enough. Then a pack of Trudon showed up, too. They were small, but there were a lot of them. They began circling the bus to see what it was. We sized up the situation and ran. As we came over the crest of a hill, we saw an incredible sight. It was the Mayasora nesting ground. We weren't the only ones who had found the Mayasora. The Trudon had followed us. They invaded the nesting ground. The Mayasora parents defended their young. All at once, a sandstorm blew up. In minutes, a thick layer of sand covered the dinosaurs. Everything happened so fast, there was no way we could help the dinosaurs. Maybe they would become fossils. Back in the bus, Miss Frizzle Frizzle drove forward in time. We thought we were going home, but on the way, the bus screeched to a stop. We are in the very last minutes of the Cretaceous period, said Miss Frizzle. The bright light was a bright light was shining in the sky. Notice that asteroid, said the Frizz. It's a huge rock from outer space. Soon it will hit the Earth. The frizz pushed the forward button, and we started again. When the alarm rang, we were back in our own time. The paleontologists were worried about us and came looking for us. We gave them a tip on a fossil site. Then we waved goodbye and drove back to school. In the classroom, we made a chart of our trip to the dinosaurs. Just as we were finishing it, people started coming in for visitor's day. The visitors admired everything. They had never seen such fabulous projects, such wonderful books, or such an incredible video. And of course, they had never met a teacher quite like Miss Frizzle. That was The Magic School Bus in the Time of the Dinosaurs. And this is EDU Kids Space. Subscribe for more books, stories, and lessons. And if there's something in particular you'd like to learn about, leave us a message in the comments.